What if I were to tell you that you're a wizard and that I can prove it right now? Think about this. Wizards and witches are people who can do magic. Magic is simply a set of practices that are known to manipulate either natural or supernatural forces and beings. Now here's the proof. Visualize the last time you were given a really genuine compliment. I mean the type of compliment where you can't help but blush a little bit because it means so much to you. I'll give you a second. Now focus on how that compliment made you feel. Focus on how it changed your day. Based on just the words someone said to you, electrical signals in your brain change the whole state of your body chemistry, making you feel more alive, open, and probably a tad bit embarrassed. But how crazy is that? Somebody spoke a few words, casted a spell, and with it, your entire body chemistry changed. They manipulated you with their practices. They did magic on you. And you, every single day, are doing magic on everyone you interact with. Not only on the level of words, but also much more subtle levels. But we'll talk about that another day. What matters right now is that we start to understand the power we hold and use it to benefit ourselves, our family and loved ones, our friends, strangers, plants, animals, and everything that makes this beautiful existence possible. And that is what we're gonna start doing today when we learn the Expecto Patronus charm. I woke up in the middle of the night a few weeks ago and the Expecto Patronus scene from The Prisoner of Azkaban was playing on repeat in my mind. I hadn't watched the movie in over two years, so I was thinking, maybe there's some wisdom or some sort of symbolism in here. So I started to break down the symbolism, and it slapped me in the face that this scene is a perfect example of self-healing. From there, I realized it could become an interesting practice, and I started testing and trying out different variants of it and came to some pretty cool results. And that is what we're going to go over in this video. In order to make it easier to follow, we're going to split the video into two pieces. First, we're going to talk about the symbolism in this scene and break that down. And second, we're going to talk about how you can do this practice at home. So without further ado, let's get into the symbols. So we got three main symbols in this scene. We have a past Harry Potter and Sirius Black looking beat up, getting their soul sucked out. We have Dementors who are sucking out the souls of Harry and Sirius Black. And we have future Harry coming back to the rescue, casting the Expecto Patronus. Let's start with the Dementors. Dementors are 10 foot tall human looking things floating around wearing creepy robes and they survive by sucking the happiness out of people. They are even able to perform the kiss of death where they legitimately suck the soul out of a human, leaving the poor individual a shell of who they were, feeling pretty unmotivated to live. So what do these Dementors symbolize? Depression. J.K. Rowling even says that the Dementors were a physical embodiment of the depression she was struggling with throughout writing the series. So we have depression, and we have a beat up past Harry Potter and Sirius Black looking pretty hopeless. Now when we feel hopeless is when depression can strike the hardest. As a Dementor begins to give Sirius Black the kiss of death, and we see his soul exiting his body, Past Harry is too weak to do anything when all of a sudden, from across the pond, comes this massive field of blue and white energy that wipes the Dementors away, sending them running for their mamas. Now there's only one spell that can ward off Dementors, and it's called the Patronus Charm. Now let's look at what it means and how it's done. Most of the spells in the Harry Potter series are derived from Latin. And in Latin, expecto patronus means I await a guardian. Expecto means I wait, or I look, or I desire for, whereas patronus means guardian or guard in the court. Now that we know what the spell means, let's look at the scene where Professor Lupin teaches young Harry how to cast the spell for more details. Now the spell I'm going to try to teach you is called the Patronus Charm. Did you ever hear of it? No? Well, the Patronus is a kind of positive force, and for the wizard who can conjure one, it works something like a shield with the Dementor feeding on it rather than him. So it's a pretty neat concept for a spell, but what's more intriguing for me is the way that it's cast. But in order for it to work, you need to think of a memory. Not just any memory, a very happy memory, a very powerful memory. Can you do this? 
So symbolically, what you're doing with this spell is summoning protection from depression, dementors, by focusing your attention on a positive memory. Let me say that again. You are summoning protection from depression by focusing your attention on a positive memory. So how is this done? Well, let's go back to Lupin. Close your eyes. Concentrate. Do you have a memory? Allow it to fill you up. Lose yourself within it. Then speak the incantation, Expecto Patronum. Expecto Patronum. The spell is done by losing ourselves in a positive memory. This means that you imagine it in as much detail as possible and then you step into the memory. You see from the memory's perspective, you hear, you smell, but most importantly, you feel the memory. You feel the emotion in your body of that positive memory. Just like when somebody says something that makes you feel good, by focusing on a positive memory, you are literally shifting your entire body chemistry. Except this time, instead of being manipulated by an outside source, you are doing it internally. You are doing magic on yourself. Now doing this is already a potent, powerful process, but why not take it a step further and use this charm that we just learned to heal some past trauma. Now this is about to get real. So back to the symbolism in the scene, we have future Harry coming back into the past and getting rid of the Dementors that are hurting past Harry. Now this is the definition of self-healing, the present you going back into the past and healing a past you who has trauma in a certain experience. Now you may say, well, this is a fictional story where Hermione has a time turner that's just really helpful so they can go back in time, but this is the real world where we can't go back in time. Well, here's the key to that. Will you agree with me that you can only experience what's happening right now? Not only that, but even when you think of the past or ponder the future, all you are doing is doing those things in the present. Everything you're experiencing is now. And since feelings are an experience, all feelings you have are now. So trauma from the past is a present trauma. This phenomenon of everything you experience happening in the now is referred to as the eternal present or the eternal now. Spiritual work focuses on experiencing the eternal now as deeply as possible. Because if you are able to fully experience the eternal present, then you've let go of your identities with the past you, and you've stopped projecting suffering into the future you, so you are able to experience what you truly are. For today, I'm not going to get too deep into that stuff because it's definitely a rabbit hole, but if you want to hear me go in depth in a video about that, you can let me know in the comments below. All you need to know for now is that spiritual work focuses on the present. It does this because emotions and experience and thoughts are all happening in the present moment and spiritual work is all about just making your life experience better. Thinking vividly of a past memory brings it into the present because you are now experiencing it. Therefore, if we bring a past memory into the present and meet it with our present self, and our present self delivers healing and loving emotions to this past memory, then we are healing trauma. That was a lot of words, so let's look at the Potter scene to break it down more simply. I'll break it into three pieces. First, future Harry travels into the past and meets past Harry. This is the same as you vividly imagining a past scenario, bringing it into the present and meeting it with your present self. Two, Future Harry acknowledges the pain as past Harry is being attacked by the Dementors. This is the equivalent of you feeling the painful emotions that the past you is going through in the memory that you're experiencing. Thirdly, future Harry casts the Patronus charm, sending the Dementors away and saving past Harry. This is the same as the present you building up a lot of caring and loving emotions and sending it to the past you in that memory, healing that trauma. 
And that is how you cast a self-healing Patronus. Three simple steps. First, you vividly imagine a memory you want to heal. Second, you become the past memory and feel and accept the emotions that are stored in that past traumatic experience. Third, you imagine your present self arriving, conjuring up loving energy and sending it to the you in that traumatic memory. You can do this by casting a Patronus charm just like we learned earlier. You need to first build that positive energy within yourself, and then just like in the scene, you can imagine yelling Expecto Patronus, shooting this massive field of energy at the old you that's just full of this love and healing potential. The more vivid you can imagine this, the more you will physically experience it. So you don't need to use the same colors or the same type of energy that they do in the movie, but that can sometimes help as a platform to start. On. I find it most effective to then go back into my past self, envision this energy coming at me, feel these negative emotions inside of me, and then feel those negative emotions get wiped away as this positive field enters me and fills up my body. Now for a few tips and warnings. First, a warning. Start small. Putting yourself back into a traumatic experience can be really shocking. You will be surprised how much you can actually feel based on purely imagining yourself in that situation. Start with something easy and practice the process. You need to imagine yourself as a young Harry learning the Patronus charm, where if he had started by facing a real full Dementor, he would have gotten his butt whooped. So start small with something simple like maybe something that was just annoying to you the other day. And please refrain from thinking that starting small is a waste of time because one, every time you practice, you're going to get better at the process and be able to do it better in the future. And I think you'll notice that even doing small emotions are actually a lot more powerful than you would think. And two, this isn't a race. Life is not a race. It's about living deeply. And this practice is just about opening yourself more deeply to your own emotional field and healing that. Now for three big tips that will help you in this process. First, make sure you have the time and space to do this. If you get interrupted halfway through, those negative emotions might leak into your day and make for some weirdness. Secondly, I have found this practice most effective when I do a stillness meditation before it. A stillness meditation is simply a meditation that helps you come further into the eternal now. The easiest thing you can do for this is a simple breath meditation where you breathe in and consciously think I am breathing in and feel that and then pause and breathe out and consciously think I am breathing out and you feel that. As simple as this sounds, it will do a ton for locking you into that imaginative present state. If you want other ideas for stillness meditations, simply Google it and you'll find tons. Finally, tip number three, a bonus that I like to do in this practice is to play out the memory now that my past self is empowered. For example, imagine I had some past trauma from a relationship from a breakup scenario. I go back to that breakup scenario and I heal myself and I'm feeling really good, but then I realize that I kind of treated my partner at the time poorly. In that imaginative state, now that I feel empowered and full of love, I can treat that past partner in a way that I wish I had in the moment. Not only will this heal more deep emotional stuff within you and maybe even within them, we'll get into that another day, but it will also empower you to act differently in a future similar scenario. And there you have it folks, the Patronus charm. Now, if you like this content, I would really appreciate it if you shared it with your friends, family, and enemies. My name is Eli, and my brother from another mother, Mitch, and I run this YouTube channel called A New Dream, where we're sharing our journey towards what it means to live a fulfilling life. If that interests you, then please hit the little subscribe button and bell notification button down below, and you will be getting a lot more content just like this. We would be so grateful to have you along for the ride. Also, if you try this practice, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear about the spells you're casting. And remember, you are a wizard, so use your powers wisely. Much love.